Sons of Horus, the bold rebranding of the Lunar Wolves. They got a new logo, new color palette and everything. After the Lunar Wolves great victory at Olinor, along with being named Warmaster, the Emperor also granted Horus permission to change the name of his legion. He initially declined, but a few years later he reconsidered the importance of redefining his role within the Imperium, which became much more than he bargained for. Sons of Horus are one of the new poster boys for the 30k reboot. And there are a lot of different ways to paint these guys, but this method is involving contrast paints. And this is a nice, quick and easy method to start pumping out those Legionnaires. So, let's get started. Now, I've already based this model with a light grey primer, and we're going to start with our first contrast colour, which is Croxagore Scales. This is a really nice turquoisey colour, and we're going to apply this from the top of the model in a zenithal style because we're going to save the bottom for our second colour. And our second colour is Pterodon Turquoise which is a slightly darker version of our previous colour and we're going to be applying this from the bottom up just to emphasise those shadows. Now this isn't an exact colour for the Sons of Horus but it's passable. But if you do want to tone that green a little bit more you can give it another coat of Sotec Green. And you'll have to thin this down about 50-50 with airbrush thinner or water just to get it through the airbrush. A straight up Sons of Horus colour seems to be a little bit of a gap in this Citadel contrast range, but you can make do with what you've got. Now that our base armour colours are finished, we can start working on the details. And starting with the trim, we're going to be using Scale 75 Viking Gold, and this is just for the shoulder pads. And we're going to need two coats to go over this turquoisey colour. Now this is a fantastic gold and I can't recommend it enough. This has been my replacement to Retributor armour, which I had used almost religiously. But this is just so much smoother and such a good quality of colour. And if your model has one, you can paint this little headband around the helmet. And the second colour for our trim is going to be Vallejo Gunmetal Grey. This is going to go around all the ribbing on this armour. And this can be quite painful on these Mark III models, but just take your time with it. And slowly but surely, you'll end up getting through it. And while we're here, we're going to use this colour for a few of the other details on this model, including the casing on the bolt gun. And all the details on the power pack, including these vents and all the little cables and doodads at the back. And last but not least, the teeth and the casing for the chainsaw. The most badass of melee weapons. And that's all the metallics, and for the shoulder pads we're going to be painting them black. And this is not Abaddon black, this is Vallejo model colour black. But to be honest, they're much of a muchness. And because this is more of a speed painting tutorial, this is why I'm using just regular plain black. Usually I'd mix a bit of blue in there just to give it a bit of a matte finish. That's an old printer's trick for getting really rich blacks. Usually if you're printing any CMYK colours, anything that's 100% black will just look great. Whereas if you mix this about 60% blue in there, it'll look really rich. And the same applies for paints. And I'm also going to be painting this knee pad here. And on these Mark III models, it's a bit hard to know where this knee pad finishes, so just draw yourself a little boundary line. And to paint the rest of the details on the bolt gun, we're going to be using Dura Aluminium, which is a brighter silver. And the grey we use for the casing looks a little bit bright, but don't worry, we're going to tone that down with a bit of shading. For the eye lenses, we're going to do the old 1-2 trick, and that's just a little dab of white inside the eye socket, followed by a small dab of whichever contrast paint you want to use. In this case, it's red. And to darken up this bolt gun, we're going to be using this black Templar contrast paint, which is basically a little stronger than Nolan oil. And I'm going to paint this all over the bolt gun, including the newer silver details that we just did. And that's most of our base colours out of the way, I'm going to start painting this iconography on the shoulder pad. And starting with the eye, we're just going to be painting a red oval on the shoulder pad. And then with a slightly more orange red, we're going to do a smaller oval inside that one, just to give us a bit of a highlight. And for good measure, just a small dot of Fire Dragon Bright, right in the centre. And back with the Viking Gold, we're going to draw an outline on the outside of this oval. Followed by a vertical line coming from the bottom of the oval with a little chevron at the bottom. And apologies for this crappy footage, I was trying to concentrate too much without looking at the monitor. But here you can see what it looks like when it's finished. And in the opposite shoulder pad we're going to be painting the 16 in Roman numerals. As I like to do with all of my Space Marines, 30k and 40k. And here on the knee pad as well, I'm going to do the same 16. And 
I thought I could get away without highlighting and washing this gold and silver, but it never looks as good without it. So I'm going to go back and do these edge highlights with this liberated gold. And to do this easily, just use the edge of your brush on the sharp edges of the model. And these Mark III models have some nice easy areas to do some edge highlights. And then just very lightly pick out these rivets that appear around the shoulder pads. And I'm going to wash this gold down a bit with a bit of Brightling Flesh Shade. This is just a nice warm tone. And it's going to sink into any of those recesses and just make all the little details pop. And I'm going to do the same with our silver going back to the Dural Aluminium. Because we've washed it, it's going to be a little bit darker so we can now pick out a few of those areas with this. And I'm just picking out a few selective areas with this silver, just around the corners and edges of the metallic parts. Mainly on a bolt gun, but also around the areas of the trim. On the bolt gun, I just like to run a rough little line along the casing just to make it look a bit worn, especially if I'm doing a black casing. Clean edge highlights sometimes look cool, but they're just not for me, unfortunately. And there's a few little light highlights around the backpack area also. Now I wanted this base to look the same as our Lunar Wolves model, so I'm going to be using this Martian Iron Crust again. And this is also going to contrast nicely with our Turquoise. Now this stuff can take a little while to dry, but when it does, give it a nice wash with Agrax Earthshade, and you can use this straight from the pot. And just a quick dry brush with Riser Rust. And then when you finish that, just pick a colour for the rim of your base. And that's it for our first Sons of Horus Legionnaire. Time to commit some heresy. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and follow us for some more Horus Heresy tutorials. And again if you want some good Horus Heresy reads check out Horus Rising, available from the Black Library or any other third party bookseller. Personally I buy most of my books from the Book Depository, but I'll leave that up to you.